Hello boys, so I was thinking we weren't going to get our normal school tour like we like we usually would in June. So um, instead of that, I thought we'd do a, a virtual tour maybe of Sligo. So maybe I'd show you around the, the more well-known places, uh, places tourists like to come and places I like to go as well when I'm at home. So I'm going to take my phone with me and record it. And I was just thinking like what's the best way to get around? Like, I could take the arse and be nice and comfortable. And, That'd be really nice, wouldn't it? I could take my bike and go around and get some, you know, get some miles into the legs and no harm for me to do a bit of exercise. Or I could do something really fun and uh, I could take the Mini out of the garage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Mini and we're going to go spinning around Sligo looking at the best parts of Sligo. Right boys, let's go. So we're leaving the house now and we're going straight towards Strand Hill is going to be our first stop in our virtual tour boys. See you there. So boys, here we are in Strand Hill, one of the most famous uh, beaches and kind of villages in Sligo. So the great thing about Strand Hill is it's right on the coast and there's so much to do here. The place is always thronged with people and they're out walking surfing and um, going to the pubs and restaurants now not at the moment during quarantine but very very busy during the summer with tourists and Sligo people as well boys so there's great great sights here there's a wonderful beach and people are surfing kayaking windsurfing on it the whole time stand up paddle boarding and um, whatever you're having yourself and loads to do there's sand dunes you can walk on and climb up there's a golf course and also there's an actual airport on the other side as well. And also in Strand Hill boys we have Sligo Rugby Club where I play my rugby. So here's the pitch. There's no weather pitch there behind me. And it has to be one of the most picturesque pitches in Ireland. Like look, sitting right under Dockneray. Absolutely great place to play. So some of the other things around Strand Hill are very, very famous boys. We have Coney Island and the rumours are or folklore is that the Coney Island in New York is named after the Coney Island in Sligo. Now, why, why was it called Coney Island? That's kind of a weird name, isn't it? So apparently it's Coney Island due to the Irish word for rabbit, honey. So uh, rabbits were like very, very, very prevalent on the island. There was a massive rabbit population, so it was called Coney Island, probably came from the word honey. And when this, there was this sailor and he used to go on boats from Sligo to New York, bring in immigrants. And leaving Sligo port, he saw all the rabbits on the island and learned it was Coney Island. And apparently when he got to New York, he saw uh, an island in New York that had rabbits on it also. And called it Coney Island after the island he had seen in Sligo. So apparently that's where it gets his name. Still one family live in the island, six people boys. Still live in the island. And the funny thing about an island with six people is there's two pubs. So if there are priorities set there, boys. So that's Strand Hill, boys. Uh, really, really great place. A place where I go surfing as well. My dad goes surfing here. And let's get on to the next place. So Knocknaray is very very famous for one reason in particular boys, so it is the burial site of Queen Maeve, who was the Queen of Ireland and the Queen of all of Connacht in particular. So she had many enemies and in particular she fought one war against this man who happened to be her ex-husband um, for this prize bull who was the best bull in all of Ireland and had the best genes so had the best uh, offspring shall we say and uh, she had was such an enemy of them and didn't like them so much that when she was killed and when she was buried she wanted to be buried standing upright uh, facing Ulster so apparently her body is stood upright on the cairn facing Ulster uh, from Knocknare and if you go up there you can actually see the trail going up to it it uh, does point kind of easterly, northeasterly towards Ulster. So um, the, the trail up it anyway is point towards Ulster, so there must be some truth in it. So here boys, you can really see a detailed map of the cairn 
uh, and Strand Hill. So here is the car park where we are, right there. And it kind of shows your trip up the path, it kind of S's up there and you can go up a few ways and you can see the cairn on the, on the map there boys and Queen Maeve is said to be buried up right there. So Knocknare now to Caramore boys, let's go. So that's where we were boys, we were at Knocknare and this is where we're going next. So this is Tomb 51 in Caramore. So similar to Knocknarea, Caramore Tombs is about 3000 BC is when it ages back to, so that's about 5000 years ago. And these would have been some of the earliest settlers in Ireland boys. And why Caramore is so famous is because of these really intricate uh, burial tombs. So in behind me you can see this massive mound of rocks. As these tombs are very very intricate boys and took a lot of work as you can see it's not like a normal graveyard or a, a tombstone like we'd have nowadays these uh, burial sites took a lot of work and uh, they've discovered hundreds here but there there must have been thousands boys because there would have been operations during the famine in particular where fields would have been cleared and as you can see from the fields around me there isn't a lot of stones in the fields there's a lot in the walls and a lot of these stones that are in the walls would have been uh, tombs and you can still see fairy forts and and tombs littered around the fields around here. So Caramore is a really interesting place boys because this is kind of actually older than the, the pyramid of Egypt and people were here in Ireland long before those pyramids were built. It's kind of mad to think how, how long ago they are and how they're still still standing today and now that we know about them even though it's 5,000 years ago. A bit mad. Well, boys, we're very lucky today in great weather. So we've just arrived at Tubernall Tolly Well and very very uh, interesting place, very calm place, very religious place near me boys. So uh, this well is supposed to be very important during the penal laws. So that was a time in Ireland when uh, Catholicism was banned. So people uh, would come to secretive places like the Holy Well here beside us and celebrate Mass. And um, St. Patrick himself was supposed to have celebrated Mass here and there's an altar in the well boys. Um, that are said to have St. Patrick's uh, handprint in it. So we're going to go into the well and uh, you're going to see the lovely peaceful spring that the water comes up from. You're going to see the little bridge uh, that people uh, go across and the little tiny uh, stream that flows through the well as well as kind of people praying and the stations of the cross in the well. Hello boys, so this is the wonderful Loch Gill. Great day, great sunny day. So, a huge lake, about 12 kilometers, all the way over there to lead from behind me. Okay, and there is about 20 islands in the lake, boys, okay? And although you can't see them in the water, there is some brown trout and some salmon. So, fish that you'd, you wouldn't be afraid of eating, boys. Okay, and also around the lake, there's swans, and ducks as well. So that island straight in front of us boys is called Beezy's Island and people lived on it up until about 1951. Okay and now it's not inhabited anymore but Loch Gill is surrounded by 
lovely mountains and as you can see people go out on the lake boating and stuff like that it's not too deep at the same time i wouldn't chance swimming in it and as you can see there's loads of lovely wildlife around the lake boys and you can be sure there's all sorts of things there living in the shoreline and you can see the wee dock here for boats really really gorgeous place 20 islands in the lake boy that's how big it is okay beautiful beautiful place and the place that inspired wb to like write a lot of his poems and in particular remember that poem i let you boys the lake i live in is free well this this is the lake i live in is free boys okay So this is the Garibogue River boys and it flows from Loch Gill straight to Sligo. It's only about 5 kilometers long from the lake out to the sea but people can often be seen fishing in the river because of the salmon and the trout and also stand up paddle boarding and kayaking also. Hi boys, just arrived out here at Glen Car Lake, absolutely stunning now. Had to jump back into the car there, it was a bit, uh, a bit rainy, uh, although it doesn't look like it at all. But a few heavy drops came down there. Uh, this place is absolutely beautiful boys, it's between Sligo and Leitrim. Also, um, our waterfall as well, I tried to get into it there, but it is um, closed at the moment. So I'm going to look through my phone and see if I can find any um, any pictures or any videos and I'll put them up here now if I have them. So this building here I think boys was an old schoolhouse or something. And now obviously a farmer has used it for his um, his sheep. But this whole area is called the Glen If Horseshoe Boys. So called because the cliff behind me is shaped in the shape of a horseshoe if you look at it from the boat. Boy. So if you look up just there right above my finger is Jeremy and Grania's cave. So that formed from uh, rain seeping through the top of the mountain there, top of the cliff, coming down through and eroding uh, out a big hole where the cave is right there. Um, so I've been up there once before and I'm going to put the photo up here now. Uh, it is absolutely huge when you get up there and it takes about, it takes the guts of an hour boy. It doesn't look too steep there, but trust me, it is. There's ropes up some parts because they're like that. You have to use the ropes to pull yourself up. It's called Jeremy Grania's Cave because uh, two ones called Jeremy Grania are said to have run away together and hid in the cave. Okay, so this is old Irish kind of folklore. So Jeremy, or sorry, Grania was supposed to marry Fiona Cool. Fiona Cool was much older than her. She didn't really want to do it. She fell in love with uh, Jeremy. So being hunted by Fionn McCool and his dogs, so he was sent to a hit in that cave. And this is the hit of it. So, very cool that it's kind of involved in uh, old Irish mythology and folklore too. And it's in a, a pretty cool place as well. And if you look through there, there's a bit of a hole in the cliff there, right at my finger. Uh, that is on a windy day, it sounds like someone howling, like a witch howling. It is really, really creepy. Right? Okay, so it's taken me about 30 or 40 minutes to get here from Glen Carr. Uh, we'll have a look around everywhere. There's a waterfall uh, there. See the waterfall, boys? Waterfall there. And, uh, absolutely 
lovely and mini look of them. So boys just arrived here at Mullachmore and it is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, you can see a beach over here to the side uh, and Ben Bobin and the mountains behind it. And uh, also you can see in front of me the little harbour which has loads of little boats in it and um, yeah it's a really fantastic place, really good kind of tourist spot and uh, lucky for me there isn't too many tourists around today. So. Yeah, this is Mullick Motor Boys. Um, really, really well known for absolutely massive waves. If uh, there is a certain wind and certain weather, you will see surfers here from all over the world coming to ride the monster waves. And I think the biggest waves ever, that might be a wild claim now, but I think Mullick Moor has among the biggest waves in the world. Yeah pretty cool place. So boys that concludes our tour. I have the mini back in the garage and uh, I hope you enjoyed the little journey we had around Sligo and saw the nice places like Strand Hill, Knocknaray, Carrowmore, uh, the Holy Well, Glen Carr, uh, Glen F Horseshoe and Mullock Moor. Uh, nice to show you around. Uh, stay safe, stay happy and we'll chat to you again soon.